What's going on, everybody? Welcome back to the channel. Hope all is good wherever you are. In this video, we're going to watch Ben Shapiro debate a woke pro trans student at a Young America Foundation event. Uh, before I get to the video, though, big thanks to everybody who subscribed lately, who left a thumbs up on the video. Really appreciate it. And to all of you in my comment section, you guys are awesome. I've been uh, chatting back and forth with a lot of you. I can't reply to every comment because there's been a lot lately, but I do read them all. And I learn a lot of stuff from the people in the comment section. Like this channel is a channel about my opinion. And I do this stuff because it's topics and stuff that concern where I'm from and stuff that I'm into. So it's great to talk to other people who are into it, even if we share a difference of opinion. I live here in Thailand. They don't care about this stuff. They don't even speak English. So, you know, I have nobody to chat about this stuff with where I live. So this is why I started this channel and I... Uh, I appreciate the support, and I appreciate uh, learning from all of you. So uh, that's it. Just want to say thanks. Let's get to the video. Hello, Ben. Uh, there was a time where the word mother exclusively described a woman in relation to her biological offspring, but our definition has since shifted to account for adoption, leaving us with a more social and less biological outlook on motherhood. My question for you is how affirming transgender identity is such a threat to biology when we have clear precedent for similar shifts in language? Okay, so usually there is a distinction. You, you can call somebody mother, but then an adoptive mother is not going to be insulted when you say biological mother. Right? An adoptive mother is not going to say the biological mother is an inappropriate term. The trans movement claims that the term biological female is somehow offensive. The, the trans movement will claim that female encompasses not biology somehow. It's, it's a bizarrely illogical categorization. So the trans movement is not a threat to biology. Biology is biology. People will continue to reproduce. I mean, some of us, but in any case, the, the no implication made, but in any case, the, so, some people will, people will continue to reproduce, those reproductive, these, those reproductive relationships will be almost entirely male or female, and the, the, the only exceptions would be in vitro or artificial insemination, which will be extraordinarily tiny percentage of, of actual inseminations and pregnancies, so biology is not threatened, truth is threatened. Right. I'm not worried about biology being threatened. If you want to threaten your own biology, I mean, that's, that's your prerogative, but truth, the idea that male refers to a biological, a biological category as opposed to an idea that you have in your head that is unverifiable by any sort of objective reality, that is something that, that nobody who cares about truth should acquiesce to. The entire, the entire way that we communicate is through words that have mutually agreed upon definitions. And the definition of a word cannot be a, a, in, in a roboros that eats itself. It can't be a woman is anyone who says they are a woman, which is a woman. It's completely circular. That has no definition. If you want to define a category, the category has to have definition. And any attempt to broaden that category out to include things that are clearly not in that category, and in fact, there are only two categories, male and female, they're actually in the other category, that, that is a fundamental assault on the truth, and nobody should accept That's. that. Um. Like Ben Shapiro just said, the truth matters because language matters. You don't just get to change the English language or any language based on how you feel that morning and everybody else is just supposed to go along with it. Like there's a grammatical construct when it comes to pronouns that we use properly. If it's your name, obviously, it doesn't matter. If you're a woman and you tell me that your name is Steve, I'm gonna call you Steve. That doesn't affect me one bit. Not at all. Don't care. But when you start changing language and when you start changing laws, that stuff starts to matter. Like, you have to be grammatically correct. If, for example, everybody watching here tries to describe what's going on, you say, well, Mike's in front of the camera, you would not say she's in front of the camera, you would say he's in front of the camera because she would be grammatically incorrect. You would also say they are in front of the camera because, again, that would be grammatically incorrect. You don't get to change the language based on the feelings of a certain individuals. If I tell all of you that my preferred uh, prepositions say are behind, well, you wouldn't say that I'm behind the camera just because that's the way I want to be referred to or I identify as somebody who stands behind things. You just wouldn't do that because it's ludicrous and it wouldn't be the truth. And the truth matters. That's all we're saying here. I have nothing against the trans community per se. What you do in your own home is up to you, but at the same time, you can't expect to change language based on such a small percentage of the population. Change the language that we've had forever, and in the last five minutes, uh, now we're supposed to change it, that there's not only males and females, there's this spectrum of gender. I'm sorry, but no. Back to the video. 
In one of your more infamous debates, you said, I'm not going to modify basic biology because it threatens your subjective sense of what you are. Yes. Uh, my argument is not that terms like biological female or biological male are necessarily offensive. My argument is that um, you are saying that s referring to a trans woman as a woman or a trans man or as a man or et cetera, et cetera, is like inherently offensive or threatens biology. And I'm curious why, why, um, why it's so threatened when there's clear precedent for changing the language. Again, or, the, or the, 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 term, the term mother does not include father. Every category has to have boundaries. The boundary of female starts at male. And when you start including male in the category of female, you are threatening biological definitions as well as basic truth. Well, you could say the category of mother starts at conception or you know, a biological relation to an offspring. But as we know. Um, but again, the idea that you are, but the, again, the, the idea of motherhood being the act of mothering, right? And that is, is a female. A female does the act of mothering. You can say that a female who does the act of mothering is a mother, but you also have a special category called biological motherhood. I'm not going to say that an adoptive mom and a biological mom have precisely the same definition. They don't. They're underneath a subset of category called motherhood. That motherhood sometimes involves birth, sometimes it does not, but it certainly involves being a female. I mean, what is there to say here? Only women can give birth, only females, only biological females, females born with the female reproductive organ, Females with the female chromosomes, female gametes, those are the only people that can give birth. Those are the only people that can be mothers. You can be a parent, no problem, but a mother is a biological female. That's just the way it's been since the beginning of time. And again, you don't get to change these things based on you know how you feel that morning. You woke up and you said, well, I'm a woman today. You don't get to change the English language and you don't get to change how people perceive you, how you perceive yourself as a man or a woman or how you want to uh, go out and present in the world, that's totally fine. That's up to you. But be your perception of yourself doesn't mean that everybody else has to have that same perception. Like, you know, I think of myself as smart and handsome, but I know from my comment section that a lot of you guys out there don't feel the same way. So yeah, you can feel a certain way about yourself, but you don't get to force other people to feel that way about you. I feel like this community needs to sit down together and just have a better plan. Cause just like, just small things that just don't make sense. I mean, there's a lot, the big things obviously don't make sense, but like how many genders can you fit on a license? You know what I mean? Like all these small little things in society matter. No matter what pronouns you want to use. Oh, today I'm, I'm a he, tomorrow I'm a she. Like your license, your medical cards, all these things, like you don't get to change those every day. This stuff matters and it matters for a reason because there's only been two types of human beings since the beginning of time. There's been males and there's been females and you can bring up intersex all you want, but intersex people, they have male or female reproductive organs. They might look a little bit more effeminate or look a little bit masculine, but at the end of the day, they fit in one of the two categories. Let's get back to it. What do you think about the distinction between cis women and trans women? Explain. Um, well, you're saying you're saying that um, you're saying that a more inclusive usage of the word mother isn't particularly offensive because we also have biological mother. Um, yes. We've offered the term cis woman and even biological woman or assigned female at birth. We've offered a variety of terms that okay. properly categorize people. Again, who... you cannot extend the term woman to apply to a biological male. Every category has an endpoint. If there are only two categories, male and female, and you say that female now is in this category, there are no definitions. There are no definitions. I mean, to, to paraphrase my friend Matt Walsh, I'm going to need you to explain what a woman is without reference to the word woman. We can go on all, all day like this, but. Um, yeah. Well, I wouldn't say it's necessarily circular to say that a woman is someone who exhibits womanhood. Yes, it is. Um, and that is definitionally <laughs> circular. <laughs> well, uh, my That's argument... like saying a hand is something that, defin that, that fundamentally shows handhood. <laughs> well, what I A have tree to say... is something that demonstrates the qualities of treehood. What, what, new, what new actual definitional content Woman, have you added to the word? I can define womanhood for you, which is a set of characteristics associated with females and a woman as someone who exhibits said womanhood. Okay, well, you have just used the word female and woman to define each other. So you say a woman is a female, but not a biological female. A female is a woman and a woman is a female, but at no point have you added any new say, content. No, I said a woman is someone who exhibits womanhood and womanhood is a set of characteristics. Yes, and that, that doesn't mean anything. Why does, a, how does a, it not the, mean The reason anything? it doesn't mean, okay. Again, 
again, a dog is a thing that exhibits the characteristics of doghood. It's a set of characteristics characterized by being a dog. I've added no content to that. If you have no idea what a dog is, you still have no idea what a dog there plenty, is. There are plenty of labels that refer to concepts. This is not a new thing. It's not a label referring to a concept. It's a label that's referring to the same word as the concept. You can't do that. It's I'm fundamentally circular. I'm not referring circular. to the same word. I'm saying that womanhood... You have not defined even womanhood. You said a set of characteristics that applies to females, and then you're applying it to males. So clearly this is nonsensical. I'm sorry that it doesn't... I'm sorry that, that, your, that your attempts to worm a definition into nonsense are not succeeding, but like, I can't make that fit into logic Let's because go, it doesn't, man. I mean, Let's I'm sorry. Go. This is why at these rallies or these events, you never see college professors uh, try to debate guys like Matt Walsh or Shapiro or, or any of them, because their arguments, they have no substance, like a house of cards, it just crumbles. Once you can't define the word woman, you've lost. And a lot of times the most basic questions, um, when they try to answer it, they just kind of wreck their whole argument that they have for themselves um yeah i mean i have nothing i really have nothing against the trans community i, I live in thailand i'm around we have more trans people per capita here they call themselves lady boys we have more lady boys uh per capita than anywhere else in the world and i never have an issue at all i i don't i have great conversation with them sometimes there's a big difference though there is one big difference is that the lady boys here, the trans people, they're happy to be trans. Uh, they don't say I'm a woman or I'm a man. They just say I'm a lady boy, I'm trans. And uh, if you say, because some of them do look like women, if you happen to say the wrong like pronoun or call them a woman, they'll correct you. Say, no, I'm not a woman, I'm trans, I'm a lady boy. So it's a little bit different. But I just call people by their names. That's it. I just call people by their names. What's your name? My name is Susie. I'll call you Susie. It's never a problem. I've never had an issue. I treat everybody the same way, with dignity and with respect. Uh, but I do believe in the truth. And when you look at my home country of Canada, where you can get fined for using the wrong pronoun and get into actually serious trouble for it. I mean, it's not Canada anymore, it's China, though. Like, make it make sense. The laws matter. And when it starts to affect laws and when it starts to affect kids and language and we're getting into this into the schools younger and younger and younger, like, little kids need to be kept innocent as long as possible. They don't need to be learning about gender ide identity at any point. Teach them substantial stuff. Math, language, economics, how to read if they're young. Like, you don't need to have this type of stuff in the schools. The parents can teach that if they want to. It's not the school's job to educate your kids on this type of stuff. So this is why people get upset. Because laws change, because the truth matters. And when you affect truth, when you affect reality, the actual reality for your reality, like your reality and the reality are not the same thing sometimes. So I hope you all enjoyed this video. If you did, please smash that thumbs up button. Consider, consider subscribing to the channel. Help it grow. Catch you all in the next video. Peace out, everybody.